Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. Today I have here a Honda HS520 single stage snowblower. Uh, this thing is awesome. It's the commercial version, so it doesn't have any of uh, the electric star or lights or anything like that. It is just pure business. Um, this actually belongs to a, a close friend of mine. Um, he uses it uh, semi-commercially, probably you know eight or nine driveways just uh, around the neighborhood. And uh, he reported to me that the, um, the auger, every time it hits a, a ledge or a sidewalk, it thunks and it chunks. It's also not throwing snow um, as far as it did when it was new. So uh, I had a look at it. It is absolutely the auger blades, the paddles, if you will, um, that need to be replaced. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the ignition is in the off position. Now this model is the commercial model. Um, it doesn't have the, uh, the hand crank or an electric start, so there's no key. And then I'm going to pull the spark plug off, uh, the spark plug blue off of the spark plug. There we are. So to make sure that um, the auger doesn't start to spin while I'm working on it. Okay, so this is all the parts that you need to do the job. The left rubber paddles, the right rubber paddles, the two center pieces. And actually my friend went above and beyond here because he went and bought three packages of uh, hardware uh, in the event that the ones on it right now are rusted. All right, so I've got the blower up here on my workbench. I've got it tilted back so it's resting on its support right there. Now, all I have to do is undo these bolts here and start swapping things out. All right, so I'm gonna start on the right-hand side with these two paddles. The idea is to take a big screwdriver and a 10 mil on a 3 8 ratchet or a wrench and get in here, hold the bolt from spinning backwards and crack all of the bolts loose. Doesn't take very long by hand. I was gonna use the impact here just to speed things up but this doesn't seem too bad. This one already loose from me testing out my methods. And then I think I'm gonna need a wrench over here for this one. Okay, so I just have a 10 mil wrench here. I'm gonna stick it on this side just because Access is a bit of an issue. All right, so there is a worn paddle. You can see there it's got quite a, um, sorry, it's on this side, it's quite a groove down here. Very flimsy. This groove, I think, is what we're running into the issue with. All right, here's just a side-by-side, -side, old versus new. Yeah. So this one's quite worn. You can see here on the inside edge. That'll be the leading edge, the one that takes the most views. It's a good opportunity to take some time to remove some of the crud that's built up around, um, around, around the auger shaft here that just happens with um, normal snowblower use. You can use a knife or a flathead and just get in there and cut it free. Not a bad pile on that side. That, um, you know, extra wear and tear that you don't need. Um, fuel efficiency may be decreased a little bit from a little bit of wear, but um, nothing really to worry about. But for the purpose of longevity of your machine, just get rid of that junk. So on this specific machine, the left side, so marked L, and then I've got the right side marked R, it's from the operator's uh, perspective. So the right side is actually left here because um, we're looking at it opposite and then the left side is over here. So that's how these need to be reinstalled uh, in the correct orientation. So now that I have the left side off, I'm gonna go ahead and put the left side back on, the new ones. Um, what I don't want is to uh, get confused and fully disassemble this whole machine and then have lefts and rights and center pieces so I find it best to replace the parts as I go along and that way I think everything is accounted for. So I find it easiest to have the auger flap 
where it needs to go. And then I'm only going to do these up hand tight. I like to make sure I have everything in the right position and having it all done up tight won't allow me for easy manipulation. Spin it again and then just like that. Okay, I'll just wrap up the left side now. The second other flap on the left side. Again, just hand tight. Don't forget to do it up after, but that's usually a step that I do once I have the left side or the right side completed. All right, so the left side's done, and now I'm just gonna tighten it up. Nice and snug. And of course, I'm just gonna do the same thing for the second left flap. Okay, so now I've got the left side flaps in position and tight. Now I'm going to move on to the center. Now, as you can see here, these bolts are a little more rusty, but of course, I think that's because they see the most wear and tear. So again, I'm going to use my large Phillips screwdriver, essentially just to stop the movement of the bolt. You don't necessarily want to twist a lot with the screwdriver um, and then just back it off with the ratchet. And what I mean you don't want to twist a lot with a screwdriver, initially the chance of stripping this shoulder bolt is a lot higher with it with a screwdriver. You know, you can get in the wrong angle there and it can be kind of stripped is a lot higher chance of stripping this than stripping than the 10 mil socket stripping the 10 mil nut. That's all I mean by that. So lock it in place with the screwdriver, back it off with the ratchet, and then you can start twisting with the screwdriver. Also very worn. You can see that angle right there. This was ready to be changed. Okay, so there is no left and right for the center pieces, but uh, just a comparison of the old versus the new. Quite a bit more worn. So this is just going to slip in here. So if you get confused as to which way it needs to go, just picture the leading edge. This spins forward. So I know that if the bolt holes are down here on this side, it goes like this and it just slides right in.
And I can tighten this one up. Again, just tight enough with the screwdriver and then lock it with the ratchet. There it is. Now, if you noticed, my friend had bought the new hardware here, but these are high quality stainless fasteners and really a little bit of surface rust here, not that bad. Like these ones here are pretty much mint. So I'm gonna save the old hardware for the next time I have to do the flaps. I don't see a reason to change it. All right, so the left is now done. Number one of the center is done and I'm gonna speed ahead here so I don't bore you and do the exact same thing that I just did for the other center. All right, so we're two thirds of the way there. Got the left side tidied up. Center sections are both now done. And now it's on to the right side. Well, folks, it's the exact same thing as the left side. Not much to this job. I'm expecting to see some big improvements as well with the distance the snow is thrown. I'll have to ask him and get a report on that. But the reality is this is a wear item. Um, this friend of mine, he uses this snow blower, not commercially, but also a little bit more than homeowners. Uh, an average homeowner would use. He does um, a few driveways every time it snows. So, you know, every time it snows here in Ontario, Canada, he's doing six or seven driveways. And that can take uh, that can take a toll on a piece of equipment for sure. And this is, as I said, a wear item. These are meant to be replaced, just like tires on a car. And of course, the more you use it, the quicker they wear out. Okay, very worn as you can see. I've got the other left one here. Just going to line it up. Put it back in. And if I said left, I meant right, because we're now operating on the right side. Kind of confusing because, of course, I'm looking at it here and it's the left side of the auger from my perspective, but the little sheet that it came with noted that the perspective is based on the operator's normal position behind the handlebars. Make sure you put the shoulder bolts here back in the way they're supposed to go. If the nuts are to the inside, it will affect how the snow is thrown, and we don't want that. It's kind of tricky because it wants to pivot the whole machine. Okay, so I'll just do the, the same thing on this side and then um, we'll wrap it up. What I like to do at the end of a job like this, especially after a long day, 
is just go around and make sure that I have in fact tightened everything up. What you wouldn't want to happen is for one of these flaps to fly off when you're in the middle of blowing your driveway or sidewalk, whatever you're using this for. It's just good practice to double check, triple check everything. All right, so that's it. All that's left now is to stick the spark plug back on, sorry, the spark plug lead and boot back on and button everything back up. Perfect. Ignition on if I want and it's ready to go. So now this single stage Honda blower should be running like new. Um, as you can see, the job really wasn't all that complicated. You know, maybe half an hour if you're really experienced or an hour if, um, if you're new. This, this is a job that you can do in your garage, just like I did right here with simple tools, a ratchet, a screwdriver, a socket. That's all you really need. Um, from what I understand, this is what it's gonna take to make this thing run like it's brand new again. Totally worth it. As I said in the video, you know, it's like changing tires on a car. It's a wear item and uh, you know, a blower of this price point and this quality certainly uh, deserves to be well kept. Again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, let me know in the comments. I try to respond to everybody's, uh, everybody's comments. Um, I'm really enjoying putting out this content. So thanks for watching and hope to see you soon. Take care.